Welcome to Sensory Percussion 2 Drum School, your guide to the software component of the Evans Hybrid Sensory Percussion Sound System. In this video, we're going to check out the modular structure of Sensory Percussion 2 and how you can build your own worlds of sound within it. Modules are the building blocks of Sensory Percussion 2, so it's important to know the different types and how they interact with each other. Everything in Sensory Percussion 2 is built using modules. Modules are objects that you can drag in from the library panel, each of which has a different function. You can think of them as sonic Legos that you're using to build your sounds. Each module can fit together with other modules in multiple different ways. This means that any combination of them can be rearranged to produce different results. There are two types of modules, generators and controllers. The main difference between them is that generators actually produce sound, or in some cases MIDI signal, while controllers just affect the relationship between sounds. The other important distinction is that controllers can contain other modules, while generators can't. That means whenever you see a generator module, it's the end of the chain and you can't go any further down. Modules are organized horizontally, one inside the other, so that the leftmost module is always the top of the chain and anything you see to the right of it is held inside of this module. That's why we often refer to a module as either a parent or a child module. And when there are multiple modules next to each other inside of another module, these are sibling modules. A layer is essentially just a chain of modules, each of which stacks on top of each other vertically. Unlike a module, a layer is not an actual object you can drag. It's more of a structural concept. Even when the set is completely empty, it's still made up of layers. They just don't have anything in them yet. All modules are made up of panels, each of which serves its own purpose. Panels can be shown or hidden so that if you're not using it, you don't have to see it. Right now, this note controller module is in the simplest view possible, which is just one panel, the note controller panel. But if you click on the icon in the top right corner, you'll see a list of all the other panels that this module has. Each has a different function, and we'll go over how they work in future tutorials. But for now, I'll unhide them to show you what a module looks like with all of its panels open. So you can see it's much bigger now with all the panels open. Each panel can also be expanded or collapsed with this arrow icon. So those are the panels that make up controllers, but let's check out the panels of a generator. And you can see that it's missing a few of the panels, most notably the submodules. That's because a sampler is a generator and it can't hold other modules, so it doesn't need a submodules panel. Now that we know about the two types of modules and how they're organized into layers, let's check out this example. This layer is fully collapsed so that based on what we see inside of the software right now, we don't know if this controller is holding a thousand different submodules or if it's completely empty. To get an idea, here's what it sounds like. To help us visualize the structure of this example layer, we have this tree diagram on the right. This tree represents the layer, it's just a different view that allows us to see every module in the layer regardless of what's selected. And this tree structure is very similar to how the folders on your computer are organized either in Finder or File Explorer with one inside of the other inside of the other. So if I open up the submodules panel, we see that the second level consists of two note controllers. If I select the first one and look at the submodules panel of that note controller, we see that the third level contains three samplers. If I select one of those, we now see the third level of modules, and this is the end of the branch because samplers are generators and they can't hold other modules. So all three of these marimba samples are inside of this note controller, which is set to velocity, which means as I play from quiet to loud, it's gonna move up and down the scale that I've specified, like so. Now, 
if I select the second note controller, we see it's set to the same scale and it has just one sampler inside of it, which sounds like this. So both branches of the tree have three levels of modules. If I go back to the first note controller, you can see that it remembered what I had selected. So now if you look at the graphic on the right, you'll see that it's changing from a vertical tree structure to the horizontal layer structure that we use in sensory percussion, which looks slightly different, but it sounds exactly the same. So even though in this horizontal layer view, we only see the second marimba sampler that I have selected, we're still gonna hear all three of these sibling samplers. Now if I choose a different sampler and play the center of the drum, we're still hearing all three of them. This is also true if I select the second note controller and play the center of the drum. We hear the sibling note controller module even though we don't see it. And if I play the rim shoulder, now we hear the module that we have selected, which we can tell by this blue VU meter. So now that you've seen how this modular structure works, you can start building your own sounds within it. And stay tuned for more tutorial videos. Thanks for watching.